Player's Choice Platinum Hits or Greatest Hits, or whatever you want to call them, are games that sold a million units or a set of criteria that manufacturers make on a certain console. These games were made at a heavy discount Money. and sometimes with a hideous label variant. Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from The Ratchet Lectors. And today we're going to be discussing Sega All-Stars and what it takes to make the cut. When side by side with regular releases, they stand out like sore thumbs red, silver, huh? and in the Dreamcast case, orange, these covers receive some sort of an overhaul. With the Sega All-Stars variants, these distinguishable traits include Sega All-Stars label and a slight silk screening color changes on the disc itself. Sega introduced the Sega All-Stars titles on August 15, 2000. Its first batch of games were NFL 2K, and a week later they were quickly followed up with House of the Dead 2, Please be safe, G. How could anyone do this? NBA 2K, Sega Bass Fishing. Hook it. Fish. And Sonic Adventure. A total of 17 games were selected. Sega felt that the 17 games chosen at a reduced price would give customers the opportunity to play and experience some of the finest games and push more of the units total. The games included were Sonic Adventure, Sega Bass Fishing, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Marvel vs. Capcom, Puffs of the Dead 2, and many more. Since the Super Nintendo, Greatest Hits, or as they call it, Player's Choice, and now Nintendo Selects, needed to meet a certain criteria for a price reduction. Typically, it's the number of units sold that warrants the price drop. Sega, on the other hand, with the Dreamcast, took a different approach. They instead chose games that had a few other factors. Sega All-Star selections were specific to only two of the three major regions and included very different games from each region. Japan and North America were the two major regions, while Japan included 56 games and some of which were released in North America as well. The name used to describe Sega All-Stars in Japan was Dori Kore, Dori Kore. or Dreamcast Collection. Games like Marvel vs. Capcom, Power Stone and Ready to Rumble have skyrocketed in price due to their low print runs and eventual demise of the Dreamcast itself. With a price point of $19.99 US and $29.99 Canadian, Sega All-Stars games were at a 50% discount to their original MSRP or manufacturer's suggested retail price. Sega and many other console manufacturers felt that price reductions on games would help sell consoles. Games like GoldenEye, which is already a fan favorite on the Nintendo 64, became far more affordable to those who later adopted a new console. Sales numbers are bundled together with the overall numbers of units sold. So determining a more accurate number of each SKU of the same game are not differentiated and therefore near impossible to determine. Sega was the only company in which reducing prices of its hit games didn't proceed to help push sales. Since Sega's publishing and development of games have been seen on various consoles throughout the years, Sega is no longer in control as to what games reach the platinum hit status. They are now up to the console's manufacturers and their individual sales numbers. Since the rise of digital games, price decreases happen in online stores of their respective systems. The problem with digital sales is that game prices tend to be on a week-to-week -week basis. Once you buy a digital game, you have nothing to show for it once the game is no longer supported. 
Physical price drops of million plus sellers sometimes include digital bonuses such as downloadable content. Although we all know Sega's past and their future decisions after the Dreamcast, their all-star lineup featured some of the absolute best the Dreamcast had to offer. Sega All-Stars will benefit both the consumer and retailer because gamers will be able to enjoy Dreamcast bestsellers at a low price and retailers will profit from a greater margin on its software sales, said Sega of America's Charles Belfield. The Dreamcast library consists of 248 games and 17 of those games became Sega All-Stars variants. A 1999 retail in the US or 29.99 in Canada made the All-Stars brand something to contend with. Do you guys have any of the Sega All-Stars in your collections? If you do, let me know in the comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks, guys.